Okay guys, so we're in our 3D printing room and we want to talk about the decision making around why we selected these machines, what are their advantages and disadvantages, what can they do, what can they not do, their costings, this will be a full review. This is for patients and dentists alike, mostly for dentists, it's maybe too technical for patients, but we hope that everyone will watch it. So firstly, we have different brands of 3D printers and we have bought almost every possible printer and iterated and tinkered with them. So some aren't here because they were quite frankly, uh, kind of didn't make the cut so to speak but if we go in here I'll go through the different brands and the spec is etc so this is the Sprint Ray Pro 55S the naming behind their old generation of printers were called the Moon Ray so that, that's obsolete they never they no longer do them they now do the Pro 55S Pro 95S and that's determined by the resolution so a printer just like a screen on a computer has uh, pixels and the fine granular detail is determined by the resolution so this is uh, 55 microns in the XY axis so there is a build plate here these are the resin tanks by the way so we pour the resins in here we have various resin tanks based on what materials uh, we will use so this build plate determines the size of model we can print the Pro 55S we don't use the 95S because it's 95 microns in the XY axis so the only advantage is that it has a bigger build plate and it allows you to print more models but we've overcome that by using higher resolution printers with bigger build plates so there's no logical sense to, to use the 95S the 55S is 55 microns it's a DLP printer so digital light processing which uses uh, tiny mirrors to reflect that light so if you look into the optical panel here so if you look down in there I'll actually get rid of the build plate so you can look right in there uh, you can actually see the uh, light processor so it shoots light and that's reflected off a mirror panel here which you can see as well and that then comes up and cures the resin which in turn sticks to this uh, build plate so it's a DLP printer which means it's fast the old printers which were uh, laser printers uh, SLA is were slow because they could only cure one surface area at a time this is a very fast printer hence the ethymology behind the naming of sprint sprint for sprint ray the disadvantage is that 55 microns is actually not that accurate you know if we look at this printer here for example this costs 250 euros it can print 35 microns of resolution much smaller build plate but you would think that a printer like this which was retailing at almost 10,000 euros you would think that it would be better but that, in that instance uh, it is not the user interface on this is very good as a printer it has a cloud solution which allows anyone to print from anywhere there's now sprint ray ai design so it allows for the attachment of multiple different types of build plates so we can do what they call a pro arch plate which is a smaller surface area and allows us to print less arches but quicker so the surface area is smaller so by reducing the surface area the surface tension on the resin is lower and as such you can print faster it has an automatic heater so if you look at the rim here this metal rim it will heat the resin and it'll preheat the, both the resin and the build plate, which allows us to print more predictably and print faster. The cheaper, let's just say non-medical printers won't have inbuilt heaters. So either you have to heat the room or you have to do something like this, where we've added on a heater specifically to heat the we don't actually really use this that much anymore but in the early days i used to have like 20 of these and we were iterating different uh, resins calibrating chitter box and stuff so we, we were we were playing around with it a lot so cost wise it was retailing at 10,000 euros since the uh, pro 2 came out so this is their older generation so we have pro 2s in the clinic so we have about 11 of these printers we have a lot of experience with sprint rate printers because actually their user interface is very easy and dentists like you know easy things plus it's a good quality the downside is they charge you for that these are kind of quite expensive as are all their auxiliaries so about 10,000 disadvantages are the 55 microns it could be worked on a bit better which is in fairness that's improved in the pro 2 uh, iteration now which we'll make a separate video on and the cost of the resins so the cost of the resin is very expensive just to kind of give you an idea on this actually Robert has one right there one second so this is if you look at how hard that is as a resin you know if that goes into someone's mouth you know you know you're not you're not breaking that it's extremely expensive about 2000 euros a bottle for a liter 1800 euros but maybe with fast about 2000 okay so that's sprint ray the pro 55s this is the cameo cpd 100 it's a, a very large printer because it has a ton of ventilation so one of the rate limiting with these printers is thanks so this is it's printed a night guard here and we can see the supports we can 
break the supports so patients can then wear these after we've post-processed. One of the disadvantages of these particular printer is it has an unnecessarily large ventilator, but that does allow it to print faster. So when, when these light bulbs activate, they cause heat, so they need to be cooled. So large printers have big fans, which helps the machine keep cool, which allows it to cure quickly. But yeah, it's a standard kind of LCD printer. It has a very small build plate, so actually we can't do a huge amount. If we look at the size of this build plate, it's not very big, but it's a great cost. It's uh, about 3,400 euros, so almost a third of the print rate printers, and it's perfectly fine for night guards, models, things like that. Here we have two frozen printers, and if you zoom in, you can see they're printing models. So. Things which don't need to go into the patient's mouth don't require FDA approval is to be used as a medical device in the mouth. We can use, in those instances, non-medical printers for simply models for our team to have a look, is work on, etc. And that keeps costs low so that we can keep the costs competitive for our patients, basically. The frozen Sonic Mighty has, the name comes from the fact that it's a large build plate. You can fit quite a lot of models on it. Like this build plate would be almost three times the size of that. It's an LCD printer. It's not very fast because it doesn't have a large fan, but it doesn't need to be fast. We just need it to be robust. And it is very accurate. This is an 8K resolution printer. To determine the true two-point differentiation, is you have to actually divide the resolution by the uh, surface area. So just for the dentist out there, don't be fooled by when you see 8K or is 4K printer. If you have a very big build plate for a 4K printer, actually the resolution won't be very good. So you have to keep that in mind. If you have an 8K resolution and a very small build plate, you're gonna get a really low XY uh, micron accuracy. Okay, so these are the frozen printers. The advantage is they're about a thousand euros. So really affordable. You can get 10 of these for the price of one sprint ray and they're perfectly fine for uh, models. And we can use Frozen's own uh, dental models. They actually do dental models now. So again, for the printer itself is 10 times cheaper. The model is also 10 times cheaper. So something like this, and you know, perfectly fine. We can even uh, have the patient's name inscribed on it and everything. Okay, then we're moving on to these beauties. Uh, this came out in September of 2024. Form Labs is, these are the Form 4Bs. So they're not a, specifically a dental company. They're a massive company, automotive, general medical use, and they have a subdivision of dental but their engineering is fantastic. They were the first printers to really enter the market in 2017. Not really enter the market, but they, they kind of uh, became popularized with their original SLA printer. The problem with it though, was that it was very slow and here we've got various types of uh, resins. I'm searching for their uh, particular resin cartridges. Oh yeah, here we go. So they have this, this is called the precision model resin. It's specifically for dental model resins. So in 2017, their original form printer was an SLA printer, very slow. We had those, uh, then we had the form two and the form three. They were not great. Their temperature monitor would break, which means that, and, and, and it's a completely closed system, so you couldn't override any of this. So when there were problems, unlike other printers where you could tinker with the slicing parameters, you couldn't do any of this with, with form labs. And still you can't, although recently they validated other companies' resins for their printer. They were traditionally a very closed system, now they've become opened. But they lost a huge amount of market share to Sprintray and other dental companies. But in September of last year, after much iteration, they came out with this wonderful printer, the Form 4B. They took feedback on board, and this is now an LCD printer, which is different from the Sprintray, which is a DLP printer. LCD is liquid crystalline display, so it uses a light source at the bottom, a bulb, and the light does not come through the optical panel until an electrical current is passed through LCD, which then allows some light to come through. So it's, it's efficient, it's really, really efficient. Not quite as fast as a DLP printer, but still very fast and has a long, long shelf life because essentially that bulb needs to burn out before the printer stops uh, working, which is thousands of hours of, I think it's like four or 5,000 hours of use. The other parts of it will break before then. So if we focus on this, you see what's nice is that it hasn't, this is the only printer, even the Sprintray Pro 2 does not have this yet. Uh, although the fewer parts, the fewer things that can break, but still, you know, we've been using these things uh, consistently without issue. It's got an auto mixer you see, which is mixing the resin and detecting any debris on the uh, FEP film, the NFEP. This is the film on the bottom of the resin tank. With other printers, you can get debris on the, so see, this is the auto, I'll actually do this so you can see, it won't uh, proceed because it's gonna ask me to close the cover, but 
there's the uh, auto mixer, there's the resin at the bottom. You can see a big build plate here. This is the cartridge which automatically adds resin to the resin tank, which is another feature which only the Form 4B has. There's a camera, so you can take a screenshot of the successful or unsuccessful print. When that happens, there's the Z-axis uh, control. So all of this is automated. We don't have to do the Z-axis calibration, which uh, I was always doing on the frozen printers and continue to do. Yeah, so we'll just we'll close that and this will continue. So you see there, it's automatically mixing the resin. If there's any debris, it'll detect it. With the other printers, it doesn't, and the build plate actually comes down on the debris, tears the end fep, the resin pours onto the uh, LCD panel, which then cures, and it's a nightmare. It's, it's all destroyed. It's relatively fast, so you can see we kind of have uh, about 29 minutes to go here, but it's generally about two, two and a half hours for some models. You know, it could be faster, but we're not in a rush here. With these uh, resin models, we want precision, and it's moderately priced, so it's definitely not as cheap as the Frozen, model but it's not uh, sprint race kind of crazy pricing either so these are all form 4b's and names outgoing fox knowing panther we didn't uh, we didn't pick the names they were the manufacturers picked them but we also use these for temps and uh, yeah we've iterated different designs so once things are printed if we have a situation like this once we print the models, they still have excess resin on them. So we have to put them in these alcohol washes. So I'll just use an example there. We set a timer. There's an alcohol bath in here, which is activated. I'll actually keep the lid off so you can zoom in there. Have a look from the top. So you see here the propeller there activates the alcohol, which in turn spins the model if there's enough room and gets rid of the excess resin off it. Then we click end wash. So we know all the uh, parameters required. We dry and then we insert it into these light boxes, which add a uh, wattage. So if we look at something like this, this is the Nano Cure. It's a very small light source. So this turns the uh, remaining monomers into polymers using heat and light. So we can put the models in there and turn that on and it will put a light in there. And I'll just turn this on as well. So start, you can see there the light source has turned on and same thing with this thing. This is a auto flash unit. Okay, so we put the units in there depending on what we want to cure and for how long we have different options. So once they've cured, we're then ready for finishing. And uh, if we need to make any adjustments with uh, resins, we can, uh, we can do that. For the frozen printers, I have separate videos on that. We can watch those, but we phase these out really kind of as we've scaled onto these more professional solutions. Thanks for listening guys.